G'day guys, my name is Rob from Conceptualize.tech and welcome to this Blender 2.8 tutorial where we'll be making this logo animation, which basically animates the UV texture. The idea for this tutorial came from a recent piece of work we completed and we thought we'd share some of the knowledge we gained from that experience. So let's get into it. Okay, so you can go ahead and open Blender 2.8 and we can straight away, I uh, will put on my screen class keys so you can all follow increase the font so you can actually see it and I'll delete the cube and delete the lamp um, so this tutorial we're making um, some sort of procedure to create a logo uh, or any kind of design uh, making it look like machinery is making it and there are other ways to do it um, you can do pretty fancy things with curves to try and hide uh, hide the fact that they're turning one to the other um, but using this kind of um, animating the UV texture is the best way to do it, I find. Um, but for sure, there are other ways to do it. Um, so for this, uh, I will go to the top view with seven and alt control zero to start like this. And what I'm gonna do is set up my uh, render settings first. So I'm gonna have cycles. I'm gonna use my GPU uh, and I'll put down here my performance uh, just quickly. And we're going to need quite a long texture. So, oops, 5,000. 5,000 on the X and 1,000 on the Y. And that'll allow us to have our text kind of move in from this side into the center. Uh, I should mention that this isn't really a beginner's tutorial since I'll be going quite fast through it all. Um, but uh, just kind of to give everyone a quick trick, trick of, uh, of how to make a logo or a procedure um, texture coming through. So I'll add in the text and I'm going to edit mode and put in my text. So I'll put conceptualize dot tech, dot tech and move this to the middle ish. That'll do. Um, so what I want is the text to be here, but I also want some sort of material on either side of the text. So I'll put uh, just a, a square and scale that up a bit somewhere around there. Maybe the text isn't really in the middle, but that'll do. Then I'll just extrude it out a little bit with E, uh, just to make sure that there's material on either side and bring these down with Y to about there. And it doesn't need to be perfect for this. Uh, so I'll just E again and then bring this all the way over. They don't ah, X. They don't really need to, I'll just pull that down to make sure that there's no gaps, but it doesn't actually need to be perfect because we won't see it anyway. Uh, and since I want the text to start over here, I will need to extrude out all this. I probably don't need to extrude it, but uh, just grabbing it will do. So that's kind of our end result we want to see in our texture. So I'm only going to need a hundred frames for this. So I'll then make some uh, keyframes. Uh, I'll change my animation from one frame uh, to 250 to one to 100. And I'll just click I to put a keyframe for the material and also for the logo. And then I'll go back to the first frame and move them both so they're out of the, the shot. So the texture will slowly create itself uh, give the effect that it's uh, being created that you'll see later on. So now we can push the spacebar and show that the texture is moving. It's good, but I don't like how the texture kind of moves and uh, kind of speeds up. I want it kind of being linear. So I'm going to change my timeline to the graph editor, uh, grab everything, grab everything, go to extra extrapolation mode and go to linear and then go back to my timeline and everything should be moving at the same speed. Perfect, which is exactly what I want. So now I just need to set up the rest of my scene. So the world settings, I'm just gonna make a uh, white color. The material, I'm not gonna do anything fancy. So I'm just gonna create new and change one thing. I'm gonna make it metallic. And the same for this, so I'll just put the same material. Material one, and then for, I'm also gonna make it uh, I have a look at the render, I want it to be transparent. So I go to film and transparency. And so that's it. So now that's our what will be our rendered 
uh, texture. So to set this up, I will just have 100% uh, in frame uh, samplings is 128, that'll do. And I'll put it where I need it. So I've created a folder in my uh, desktop texture animation. I'll put it there. And then I can click render. Render the animation it is. And I will come back when this has finished. Okay, so now that we've made our texture animation, uh, we can just make a scene where we put it in. So I will delete the cube and the lamp again, and I will put on my screencast keys, and they're working. So what I want to do is make just a simple roll, so a cylinder, a cylinder, and rotate it so it looks like it's going to be a roll to make our, our foil or our logo in a certain material. So I'll just make it a little bit interesting with some extruding. Uh, even though it's a simple animation, it's uh, may as well make it look nice. Uh, so I just at this side, we probably won't see it. So it doesn't have to look that good. But since I'm going to shade it smooth, I will just bevel the edges here, just so that it looks good with the shading. And we're on EV, so we want to change that to cycles. And I'll use my GPU. So let's have a look. Uh, so I just set my scene up with the world. And the material I'm going to give this thing is just going to be something simple. Give it something black. Uh, now, because I'm going to have this roll, uh, the cylinder rolling, I'm going to add uh, just something uh, to make sure that we can see it rolling as it is. If it moves around, we actually won't see anything. So I need to add a circle. And I add it in edit mode and uh, so that I don't have to animate the circle either. And I just make some sort of look uh, bolt looking thing. And I can give it a face and extrude it a little bit. It's a weird looking bolt, but it'll do. Uh, we'll just scale it a bit and put it there-ish. And maybe I'll rotate it a little bit to give it a bit more. And I'll put one down the bottom as well. And I'll give these kind of a metallic look uh, just because to give it something different than the other one and assign it. Good, so now they're assigned. And there's still a little bit problem here with the shading, so we'll just fix that up I think okay so that's our roll now we want to add in our uh, little roll of material or uh, where the logo will go so I'll scale it up a little bit it doesn't have to be super long that'll do and I'll scale along the X my mouse mousepad would allow me That'll do. Now I want to put a loop cut right where the cylinder is. Right where the cylinder is. And so now I can go back to vertex mode in edit mode and lift this up. So the idea is that this will come from another roll uh, in a roll to roll process. And in the end, it'll roll out our uh, logo. Now I want to bevel this to give it some you know, rounding off so I can put the cylinder kind of like right around it at the moment. It's kind of, uh, well, it doesn't really work so well. Uh, but if I try and bevel it now, you can see it's not really doing the, the way I want it. And that's because we need to apply the rotation scale. So now I can bevel it and it looks pretty good there. So now I want to put it in place next to our cylinder in the right place like that. So now it kind of looks right where it should be. So now we can start and what I will probably do is just move this out a bit so we have it. And I'll set my camera up a little bit to Alt Control Zero so that we see the logo coming out a bit better. I reckon that's looking good. So now we want to put, we have everything we need. We have the roll of material coming here, the cylinder that's going to be making our, our logo. 
uh, in this very simple animation. Uh, so now we need to apply or put the texture on this part. And to do that, I'm going to first put a seam. So since we don't see this because it's covered by the um, cylinder, I can just push F3 and go mark seam. And now I can start putting uh, the material on. So I'll just pull this up and change my timeline to the shader editor and create a new. And I'll just keep this one as metallic because this is all this thing, all the roll. And I will click all that part that I want to be uh, my texture. And then I'll add in my texture, image texture. And then I'll open my texture animation that we just made and put it in. Uh, so now it should be there, but because it's looking at, uh, we're on frame one, I believe. So I can go back to my timeline and have a look. We are in frame one. If I go to frame 87, we still don't see anything. And that's because we are not looking at the UV unwrapped version. So if I look at our one, we're not seeing much here. So I can, oh, I also didn't apply that here. So I need to assign that. There we go. So we see our texture is there, but it's not completely covered. So I'll change in the UV editor. Just make sure that it's all there. Now it's looking better. Now we can go back to our default view and have a look. And it's looking pretty good at render one, uh, frame one, we don't see anything. Uh, you'll notice that as I change uh, frames here, nothing happens. You need to kind of uh, reset the render uh, to see it. And uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. And I think it said frame 100. So I will change this to 100 and I'll move the camera back a bit and then get to the x-axis just to get the whole logo in it that's looking good uh, now you'll notice that the we had transparent before and we want to add in the um, transparent to the actual material so it's just using the alpha of the texture so add a mix shader add a transparent shader and put the alpha to the mix. And that should do it, I think. I think. Oh, why didn't that work? Don't swap it around. There we go. So now it's transparent. So I want to really be able to see that. So I'm going to add a plane at the back that's going to be completely black. Scale that up and rotate it a little on the X, a little on the Z, and scale it all the way up and give that a new material. And that material is just going to be an emission without any color or any strength. And then we can have a look, and it looks pretty good. Uh, so the only last thing I want to do is make sure this rolls. So as the, as the material is rolling out, this should be rolling uh, to make it look kind of complete. Uh, so if I get my keyframes up again, I can give it a keyframe here and give it a keyframe at 100. And I think I had a good one of uh, negative 1080. Oh, location, not rotation. So the rotation, I get more keyframes. negative 1080 okay and again I don't like this default what they have in the graph editor with things uh, slowly increasing so I'll get it all and change it to linear and I should just check that it's working I can just push play 
seems that it's working. Good. So now we can just set up our render like we did before. I won't have it untransparent this time. Uh, I will put it into a folder uh, that I've called logo animation. Put it there. I have it on PNG. And the only thing else I need to change is my performance since I'm using my GPU. And my mouse is not working properly. So yep, yeah, now that's it. I can just click render animation and we should have uh, the end result. So I'll come back when this is finished. Okay, so our render is now finished and we can see our logo coming out nicely with that roll animating there. And that's it for the end of this tutorial. And you can see I've leave you with something a bit more complicated and I challenge you to make something like this and uh, it would be interesting to see what you come up with. So other than that, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll come up with more tutorials later on. Other than that, I'll see you next time.